Welcome back to the realm of Final Fantasy XIV. I am a bad dancer. Also, I'm at least mediocre at playing the dancer class in Final Fantasy XIV. With the release of Shadowbringers, they introduced two new classes, one of which is Dancer, which I've opted to take up for myself. A little bit different from what I've been playing before, Dancer is a ranged DPS support class. Which means I get to attack things from a distance, which is quite nice. Don't have to worry about positionals or anything of the sort anymore. Seeing as you're probably going to be seeing a lot of Dancer, if I continue to make the Dancing with Primals videos, I decided to show off a little bit about what Dancer is and how I go about playing it. So I'm going to start by giving kind of a quick overview of all of Dancer's abilities, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the rotation, if you would, that I use. Dancer is a support class, not a pure DPS, which means it will actively have the lowest DPS of any of the classes, but it does this by also making everyone else's DPS higher. So quickly speaking on our very basic moves, your shortest rotation is going to start with Cascade and Fountain. However, when you use Cascade, there's a 50% chance of granting you Flourishing Cascade, which lets you use Reverse Cascade. Cascade also combos into Fountain, and Fountain has a 50% chance of granting Flourishing Fountain, which lets you use Fountain Fall. So you see, I got Flourishing Cascade there, which means I can use Reverse Cascade. And overall this time, Fountain is still available, so we can use that. I did not get to 50% on that to get to Fountain Fall, though. But simply burning your way through these moves is going to be the most basic of the moves you're going to be doing. Now, the important thing to keep in mind with these is that the duration of the effects is actually quite long. Dancer is very much about doing what you want to do when you want to do it, which means if I use Cascade and Reverse Cascade comes up, but I instead use Fountain, which triggers Fountain Fall, I can go to Fountain Fall, and even after going through Fountain and Fountain Fall, Reverse Cascade will still be up for probably a good 10 seconds. So you can hop on back and get that one too. Now that's a very basic rotation, and Dancer as a whole is all about procs, which we've seen here with our 50% chance to grant Reverse Cascade and Fountain Fall. Dancer also has a very powerful AoE combo, which is Windmill, Blade Shower, Rising Windmill, and Blood Shower. These four moves work identically to your single targets. Now continuing along the line of generating procs, Reverse Cascade, Fountain Fall, Rising Windmill, and Blood Shower all have a 50% chance of granting a fourfold feather, which is this gauge you can see over here on the right, of which I have two now. Fourfold feathers allow you to use Fan Dance and Fan Dance 2. Both of these are Fan Dance is a single target, whereas Fan Dance 2 is an AoE. So if you only have one target, you want to use Fan Dance, but if you have two targets, you want to use Fan Dance 2. Continuing the line of procs, using either one of these has a 50% chance of granting Flourishing Fan Dance, which lets you use Fan Dance 3. Fan Dance 3 is a targeted AoE that I would be using on, say, the Striking Dummy and anything nearby, even if I'm standing a distance away. Now that's your basics. What else do we have at our disposal? You have these six moves down here, which are all of your roll abilities, which any of, it, any of the ranged DPS, specifically the ranged physical DPS, will probably have access to these. But there's Peloton, which when you're not in combat, speeds up your movement speed. Second Wind, which regenerates a little bit of health. Leg Graze, which inflicts heavy on a target. Foot Graze, which binds a target. Head Graze, which interrupts the use of a target's action. 
This is not a proper stun, so don't think it is. And finally, arm's length, which creates a barrier nullifying most knockback and draw on effects. So if you know you're going to get knocked back or knock off an edge, arm's length would be a good plan. Back to the dancer abilities, you have these eight up here. And I'm going to start with closed position. I don't actually have a partner handy, but you can use closed position on another party member. What this does is it grants a number of effects that you can generate, not only to yourself, but also to your partner. Uh, for example, Curing Waltz. This is a small AoE cure around yourself with a potency of just 200, but it is also targeted on your dance partner. And if the two of you stack up, that's effectively a 400 potency heal. AoE at that, though small. Shield Samba is actually for all nearby party members, so it's not only for your dance partner, but it increases your defense, or I should say reduces damage, by 10%. Good to use before a big hit. Improvisation is useful when you're in combat, as you dance to the beat of your own drum, and any nearby party members will help you generate Esprit. Which you can see I'm very slowly increasing this gauge that I have over here. As what Esprit does, I'll get to in just a moment. This is good since it takes you and, re and removes you from attacking for when you, there's some downtime in a boss fight. Maybe the boss is untargetable and generating a big AoE for everyone. Um, of note is that it also increases the potency of cures for nearby party members. So again, good before that big hit. Uh, next up we have Anavant, which is a stacked ability, a charged ability, which lets you dance around and have a little bit of fun. This is sort of your gap closer, even though you don't have a real gap closer, but it comes with three charges, which is another system that was introduced in Shadowbringers. You can see the timer going up when the timer runs out, we'll gain one charge, and then the timer will begin again. After a second timer being up, we'll gain another charge, and this goes up to a maximum of three. Now beyond that, we have Flourish, which activates Reverse Cascade, Fountain Fall, Rising Windmill, Blood Shower, and Fan Dance 3. Every move that can be procced will be triggered and available to use. This is also in a recast of only 60 seconds, so you should be using this a lot more often than I originally thought. Next up is Devilment, which increases crit and direct hit rate by 20%. That's a large buff for 20 seconds. This affects not only you, but also your dance partner. And then finally over here we have Saber Dance, which Saber Dance is a targeted AoE, much like Fan Dance 3 was, but using it consumes 50 of your Esprit Gauge. We don't have 50 TP, or 50 Esprit to use, so I can't show it off right this second, but I will shortly. Now those are all kind of fun to use when the situation arrives, but they don't really add much to the core of Dancer. Now where the core is, is in your dances which is Standard Step and Technical Step. When you use Standard Step, all four of your single target moves will change into different dance moves, and you'll be prompted as to which one you need to hit next. You'll also see a display over here showing which ones you need to hit. After hitting both of them, you go back to Standard Step, which will have transformed into Standard Finish. So you see blue, and then yellow, and then finally Standard Finish. Standard Finish, by the way, is a large, powerful AoE, with a potency of 1,000. Especially because the cooldown for this is just 30 seconds, you should be using Standard Step every time it's up. That 1,000 potency AoE is worth the trouble and is greater than any damage you would be able to do otherwise. And then finally, there is Technical Step. Technical Step is very similar to Standard Step. 
However, the recast is 120 seconds instead of 30, and the duration is still only 15 seconds. Actually, that's the duration of technical step. I don't know how long the duration of the buff is, but we'll get to that. Standard step grants you the standard finish effect. This is a 60 second buff. Technical step will grant you the technical step buff, which does not last 60 seconds. I believe it does only last 15 or 30 seconds, but it's a much more powerful buff. In fact, it also, ha again, has an AoE, much like standard step, but it also requires four steps in the in-between. And we end with Technical Finish, which will be a potency of 1,500. Which is crazy. And it is, in fact, the highest potency attack in the game. It's also a large AoE. However, both of these AoEs do have drop-off, which means the first enemy you hit with it will take the maximum damage, and then every enemy after that will take reduced damage. That's actually much like Windmill, Blade Shower, Rising Windmill, and Blood Shower. Specifically, Rising Windmill and Blood Shower have that same 50% drop-off. Now, the last... that's pretty much it for a quick summary of all the abilities that I have at my disposal. A few other notes to mention, as I said, you'll want to use Standard Step as often as possible. Flourish will trigger Reverse Cascade, Fountainfall, Rising Windmill, Blood Shower, and Fan Dance 3. Even if you're fighting only a single target, you will want to use Rising Windmill and Blood Shower. The potencies, the potencies of these are 250 and 300, which is better than even Cascade and Fountain, even though it's an AoE. On top of that, they have the chance of granting you a Feather, which is good, of course, for getting Fan Dance and Fan Dance 2 up. Looking at your various cooldowns now, you have Standard Step, which is a recast of 30 seconds, Technical Step, which has a recast of 120 seconds, Devil Mint has a recast of 120, and Flourish has a recast of 60. What this means is if you use Standard Step the very first time, and typically with my opener, I use Standard Step, Technical Step, Devil Mint, and Flourish all together. So that triggers all of their cooldowns. After 30 seconds, Standard Step will be up. After another 30 seconds, you'll want to use Standard Step and Flourish together. After another 30 seconds, you'll use only Standard Step. And after yet another 30 seconds, you'll want to use Standard Step, Technical Step, Devilment, and Flourish. You will always want to use Flourish alongside Standard Step, and you will always want to use Devilment alongside Technical Step. There are a few things about the, rota about the rotation that I use that I'm not 100% on, if is the most efficient thing that I could be doing. But this is the best that I've found thus far. Which is mostly what I just mentioned. The very first time I go, I use all four of these cooldowns. This triggers Reverse Cascade, Fountainfall, Rising Windmill, Blood Shower, and Fan Dance 3, which I then go through in turn. I actually start with Rising Windmill and Blood Shower because it's harder to get AoEs since I have to be close to the enemy. This way, if the enemy happens to use an AoE or something that pulls me away from them, I can use Reverse Cascade and Fountainfall while I try to make myself back to get in the rest of Rising Windmill and Blood Shower. Getting them in as soon as possible makes sure I get them in when it's convenient. Doing these will give me a lot of feathers, so I'm at the same time trying to get in Fan Dance and Fan Dance 2, specifically Fan Dance 1, um, because I'll typically only use this rotation against a single target. Now, whereas you can stock up on feathers, you cannot stock up on Fan Dance 3, which means every time this is up, you will want to use it. Now, Standard Step and Technical Step will also grant Esprit to the entire party. Though Standard Step will only grant it to your dance partner, Technical Step will grant it to the entire party. This means you'll be generating Esprit as you have Standard Step up. And even faster when Technical Step is up. As if this gauge gets up to 100, of course you can't generate any more Esprit, so you'll be wanting to use Saber Dance pretty much as often as possible. 
A few notes is that I know what I'm doing is not as efficient as it could be, but I'm yet to work in a more efficient way to do it what it is that I do. Specifically, you want Saber Dance to fill up all the way, and then you want to wait until technical step to use all of your Saber Dances. The same thing with your Feathers. You'll want to get up four, and then once you have four, use a Fan Dance to bring you back down to three, and then wait until you have four again to use another Fan Dance to bring you back to three, or four. This ensures that you always have as many Fan Dances and Esperit as possible, again using Esperit only when you hit 100 to bring you back down to 50. This way you have as much of that as possible in reserve for when you hit Technical Step. Now I find since I use Technical Step and Flourish at the same time, I generate a lot of Esperit already, and a lot of Fan Dances already. So I'm not really sure what having more at that time would do for me. I feel like I would end up just having too many in reserve. I wouldn't be able to go through them fast enough. But with that said, as a final showcase of what exactly my, my rotation, I guess you could say, is, I'll start with standard step. And then go into technical step. Then a devilment and flourish at the same time. Getting in Fan Dance 3, getting in the regular Fan Dance is when I can, Fan Dance 3 when it comes up, and then back to the regular rotation. I didn't get a lot in the way of procs or feathers from that, which is a little sad. But, standard step is back up, so we go back to that again. And then back to our regular rotation, while we wait for standard step and flourish to come back up. Since Dancer is very proc-based, a lot of your DPS can vary pretty wildly. Depending on what procs and what doesn't, there's a Saber Dance. I'm actually going to wait just a moment for Flourish. And now I'll use Standard Step. And then I Flourish. Weaving in fan dances between. Just happened to get enough Esprit to go again. Standard step is back up. And then the last thing we're waiting for at this point is for all of our cooldowns to come up, so we can start this whole rotation over again. Now, I do find when I actually get into fights, uh, between all the dancing around that I have to do and handling the mechanics that I have to do, I will pretty much always get offset from this I quote-unquote ideal rotation. So I end up usually just kind of doing whatever it is that I can do when I can. And then back with Flourish to get in as much as I can. Now, uh, one last thing you'll notice is that Saber Dance is actually a global cooldown. So you can't weave it in like everything else. This actually makes it a little bit harder for me to remember to do it. But that's pretty much it for the basic rotation that I at least use as Dancer. I understand that there are ways to make it better, but I'm yet to find a good way to make it better for myself. But thus far, I seem to at least have been able to get by. So with that... I'm gonna go ahead and say... Until next time, everyone, this has been Dancer in Final Fantasy XIV. I hope you've learned a little bit more about how I handle things 
and what you'll be seeing when I get around to putting up some more Dancing with Primals.